Hey guys, welcome back to The Guiding Hands. And today we have another episode of Minecraft, I mean Piano Sight Reading. And so let's get straight into it. Uh, before we start, let's use one of those other cringy transitions, shall we? Hmm, which one should we do? Yeah, let's try this one. Okay, let's go on to uh, stuff that it might be a bit more complicated now. And um, yeah, sometimes in the middle of the piano, you will see these symbols right here. Uh, first of all, these symbols that look like hashtags, they are referred to as sharps. Um, and they are on the piano written right before the actual note. Meanwhile, uh, in writing, they are written after. So how we read it is F sharp. However, on the piano, on the sheet music, the sharp comes before the note, okay? So yeah, a sharp essentially refers to you go up half a step. So that refers to those black keys you see. Whenever you see a black key, uh, that's right to the right, right to the right of the note, then that is the sharp. And as you can see, uh, there are a couple more sharps here. Uh, we won't go over that too in depth. In addition to sharp, there's the opposite of it, and that is a flat. A flat goes down half a step. So uh, the black key that's closest to the left of a note would be it. A flat. So here we have uh, E flat right here. And so you would go down half a step. And on the real piano, that would be one of the black keys right to the left of E. All right. So for more clarification on sharps and flats, here are the diagram of the piano. There are uh, all the notes here C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And um, as you can see, a sharp is essentially. Um, what well, the first black key to the right of the note so c sharp would just be this black key the first black key to the right of c and so on flat is the first uh black key to the left of the original note so d flat is the first black key to the left of d now as you can see there's only five black keys and seven white keys and this pattern just repeats throughout the piano so yes some of these can mean the same thing for example c sharp is the same as d flat D sharp is the same as E flat and so on. Now, if you notice, there's actually only five black notes contrary to seven white notes. So where's E sharp and F flat? Well, E sharp is essentially just F and F flat is essentially just E. Same thing occurs between B and C. B sharp is essentially C and C flat would be B. Now, sharps and flats, uh, you can see them in some different places. And uh, in addition to them, there's also the natural. Now, natural just means you play the white key ordinarily. So why is it needed? Well, sometimes after a sharp or a flat, you may need to be reminded that the next note should not be sharp or flat. So they would put the natural sign and that means play the note normally. Now you can see sharps and flats usually in two places. And uh, the first place is just in the middle of the bar as you see in this top diagram right here. Uh, F sharp, F flat, and F natural. So the symbol comes right before the note and you would play the note as is. That's fine. However, the sharps and flats can also appear beside the clef right even before you play the song. And that's the note that every note of which this sharp is on um, is to be sharp. Now, which note is this sharp on, you may ask? Well, it is on the fifth line of the treble clef right in the middle here. And since this line crosses it, it would mean that it's on the fifth line, which refers to F. So for every F in this song, which is a G major scale, it should be sharped. Uh, and same goes if there are flats, and um, this one differs throughout from song to song. Now, you also would see sharps and flats in the middle of a song. Like, for example, down here on the E minor scale. Now there is a sharp at the start, however, this refers again to F sharp. This sharp, however, is on the line below it. It's on the fourth line of the treble clef, and this refers to D sharp. Now when it comes to this note itself, you would play it as D sharp. If there is another note that's also D in this bar, you would also play it as D sharp, whether it is uh, whether there is the sharp symbol in front of it or not. However, any D 
outside this bar that does not have a sharp in front of it would mean that you just play it normally, even without the natural, because this sharp only applies to every D note in this bar. Now bars are separated from these vertical lines, if you didn't know. And so any D after this bar that doesn't have a sharp in front of it, you would just play as is. Now we've been talking a lot about tones and all these notes just affect the tone. However, there are other elements towards sight reading as well. Firstly, there is beat. Now here are a bunch of different symbols of notes as we have seen. We see the circle here and the dot with a line here. Now these refer to rhythmic rhythm. Uh, for example, this circle right here refers to four beats. So when the bar, uh, you might have four beats and so it might have one whole note and different types of songs would have different numbers of beats in them. Now these symbols just represent how many beats there are in them. For example, this circle is four beats, half note is two beats, quarter note is one beats. Now these are mostly used. However, these are not too uncommon as well. The eighth note is essentially a quarter note with this curve beside it. The 16th note is a double curve. And when the, there is a dotted chord note, uh, hence the name quarter, this dot would refer to half of a quarter note. So it is one and a half beats. A dot and a half beat would be a circle and a line, which is like a half note, except with the dot, it is half note and half of a half note. So that is three beats. Now, these are usually common symbols you would see, and you would usually hold the notes for however long the beats last. Now, there's also the, uh, these things called rests, and th that essentially means that you rest, you don't play anything. And um, yeah, these rests have different symbols as well uh, that are somewhat similar, but <laughs> essentially different as the note shapes. So this quarter note rest is essentially a lightning bolt with a curve at the end. Half note we remember as top hat, bottom note, uh, whole note we refer to as upside down hat. Uh, the eight note is essentially a dot with a line. The 16 note is two dots with a line. And um, it's, a, it's much smaller than the regular note, if you're wondering. Finally, a dotted quarter note is essentially just a quarter rest with a dot and the same for a dotted half note. So these would be some symbols that would prescribe rhythm towards your music. Uh, next up here, you see a bunch of bass clef and treble clefs. Now these numbers right here just refer to something called time signature. They also have something to kind of do with rhythm, essentially. Now, the lower number represents uh, what type of note would represent one beat in your song. So as you can see, uh, the first three, uh, we can just treat these as three, uh, four in total, since uh, top and bottom are identical. Uh, usually top and both the treble clef and bass clef time signatures are identical. So uh, in this case, when it says four at the bottom, it would mean that in one bar, quarter notes would represent one beat. So as illustrated here, this note is one beat. Uh, the eight here, uh, which is somewhat commonly used, but not too commonly, would represent that one B is actually equal to eighth note, whereas usually it is one, one out of two. Now the four at the bottom is the more, co more, more common time signature, and four four times is the most common one. Now let's talk about the top number. The top number is essentially the number that represents the number of beats in one bar. So for example, in four, four times, there would be four beats in one bar. That would mean that there can be one whole note, two half notes, or four quarter notes, and so on and so forth. However, in three, four times, that would mean that there can only be three whole beats in one uh, bar. So for uh, example, this dotted half note would take up the whole bar, or it can only fit three quarter notes. And two four times would mean that only two beats can fit in one bar. Now six uh, would mean that six eight beats can fit in one bar. That is one of the, uh, these four I would say are probably the most popular time signatures. And that would mean that uh, six eight notes would make up one whole bar or three quarter notes would also make up one whole bar. However, in this case, the quarter notes would represent two beats because it is an eight times. 
Now you probably get used to it uh, the more you play. However, four four times is the most common one, and so yeah, that's probably the most things you would need to worry about.、Um, time signatures aren't usually the hardest to wrap around. And finally,、uh, we've talked about stuff such as pitch, rhythm. Now we're going to talk about volume. Now these are just some common terms、um, and symbols you might see. So PP would refer to、uh, very soft.、Uh, P is soft. MP is medium soft. MF is medium loud. F is loud, and FF is very loud. Basically, what you need to know is M is medium. P is soft and F is loud, and the more Fs you see, the louder you get. The more Ps you see, the softer you get. And then you have these bigger, bigger than and smaller than signs, which just means that、uh, you either get louder or smaller.、Uh, oh, yeah, and、um, basically the side where it is louder would mean that、uh, the side which is like an open mouth is the louder part, and the side which is enclosed is the softer part. And、uh, there are all these names, but、uh, you don't have to really remember them. And finally, we have tempo. Now, if you see all these terms and are overwhelmed, don't worry. I don't remember any of them and barely know any of them. But、um, essentially, what they just tell you is how fast you should play.、Um, and、um, yeah, the definitions are here for how fast these terms all usually mean. Now, the only thing I want to review is what BP mean. BPM means BPM refers to beats per minute, and so that just refers to how、um, these are how many beats would be played per minute. Now, how would you record that yourself when you're playing? What you would do is you would listen to this device called a metronome. You could either buy one or just search one online, and essentially they tell you how fast one beat should be played. And、um, yeah, that's pretty much how you dictate tempo. So、uh, yeah, that would be the end of today's lesson, and、um, yeah. All right, guys. So that is the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and、uh, yeah, my next video will be on some basic tips on how to become a next pianist, which will hopefully be coming、uh, sometime within the next eight months. So as you can see, we are improving efficiency. Now I still gotta continue my search for my piano. So、uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.